Hi, my name is Carl Danzig. I want to thank you uh, for being here with me today. Uh, I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I work at the Rand Eye Institute, which is in Deerfield Beach, located between Fort Lauderdale and Boca Raton. You know, uh, we have an enormous amount of patients with macular degeneration, and dry AMD, especially with geographic atrophy, is probably the biggest unmet need in the retina space. Currently, there's nothing available for our patients other than vitamins. Patients can lose their vision. and Even though the majority of patients don't have bad vision with dry AMD, about 10% of patients have geographic atrophy and can, be, and can have irreversible vision loss. What we're seeing now in, in, in the space is more and more innovation. You know, we had clinical trials about seven years ago that didn't meet its endpoint. We started doing trials back then in, in geographic atrophy. And then there's a little bit of a lull. Lately, you know, there's been a huge uptick in innovation and science in this field. You know, and, and we've been involved in four different trials for geographic atrophy. And identifying patients with it before they lose vision is really important because once that vision's been lost, you can't get it back. So what we're seeing is how to identify patients sooner, how to enroll them in trials. And with these trials, what we're hoping is that we may have some medicines available come 2023. You know, and there are two companies, Apellus and Iveric Bio, which have very promising phase three results. And what we're seeing with these patients that were in their trials is that they were receiving injections in their eye to help preserve their vision. I explained to patients, what's been lost, we can't regain. But having injections can help patients see clearer longer. And that's important because loss of vision is the biggest fear for my patient. So preserving vision is so important. And we, we hope with these two new uh, companies products, like we'll have something that can help these patients. You know, we're also seeing an uptick in gene therapy uh, for these patients, where patients are having a surgical procedure to inject a medication under the retina to help upregulate proteins that your body already makes to fight the inflammation and the inflammatory cascade due to complement that is causing this atrophy, this decay of tissue to occur. So that's a little bit different mechanism of action, but it's another promising avenue to helpfully help these patients. You know, right now we're having a lot of shots on goal and our hope is that some of those shots are going to get through to help our patients. If you're interested in being in a clinical trial, if you're interested in seeing if you even have macular degeneration, seek care from a retina specialist. You know, even a non-retina specialist, an ophthalmologist, sometimes even an optometrist, can help identify macular pathology and refer you to someone who can help you. But sitting on the sidelines is no longer an option for people who want to maintain their eyesight. Can you tell us more about the new drugs coming out for dry AMD? So let's talk a little bit about the Apellus trials, Derby and Oaks, and the Iveric Bio trials of Gather 1, Gather 2. So these are phase three trials. Um, and what these patients received in the trials were injections in their eye to help decrease the inflammation causing the atrophy. So it targets the confluent cascade. The, in the Apellus trial, they targeted C3, where in the Iveric bio trials, they targeted C5. I'm not gonna get into all the you know, biochemistry of it and the pharmacology, but it's part of an inflammatory cascade where if you target certain points in it, you can help decrease the amount or, or slow the progression of the disease and decrease the inflammation. Both of these trials showed promising results of patients who received injection being able to have a slower progression of the disease versus patients who receive sham. Sham means they got placebo, they didn't get a real injection, they got nothing. So the patients that got nothing marched along at a faster progression of tissue loss in the macula versus the patients that got treatment. Um, for both of these companies' trials, like I said, vision that's been lost isn't coming back, but we're hoping to preserve you know, what patients have longer. How would you recommend someone finding or getting involved in a clinical trial? Yes, Julie, that's a great question. You know, patients who are interested 
in seeing if they can be enrolled in a clinical trial. You know, they can look on your website, you know, macularnews.org, you know, part of the Macular Generation Foundation. But seeking a retina specialist, especially one that, you know, is in a university or has done trials in the past, that's the best way of doing it. You can always look at clinicaltrials.gov, though the FDA does not vet those trials and do not approve those trials necessarily. So you definitely want to do your research. But if you see a retina specialist and they're not involved in clinical trials, you can ask them, can you refer me to someone who may do trials? There are a lot of trials out there and only two trials have done phase three, so there'll be more trials coming down the pike.